she's just beautiful invention. This is the equivalent of those behind the scenes yeah. things that you it have is. to do. Yeah. Hello, I'm Lizzie Hopley and I work as well, a one-time actress for Big Finish and have now become a writer for Big Finish. I'm Lisa McMullen and I write for Big Finish and I've never acted. They probably wouldn't want me to either. <laughs> That is a challenge. That can be on one of our... Do you know what? I did offer once to read in when one of the actors couldn't turn up. They were like, it's fine. We'll get get anybody else. (laughs) (laughs) Did you find... Because we get a lot of freedom in Big Finish to write whatever we want. Mm. You also write for the big telly as well. (laughs) Big telly. (laughs) Big telly. Did any of that prepare you for the process of telly? The process is the same in that you pitch ideas and stories and outlines but the writing for visual medium is different because you are you can you can have things actually that people can see the trick Mm. with audio which switching between the two I find quite tricky sometimes because sometimes I will overwrite for telly because I'm used to trying to create a visual impression in the the readers yeah yeah, not the reader the listeners mind so your your stage directions for audio have to create a vision in the the listener's mind whereas with telly you can actually say this is happening you know you can have green monsters running over the hills um (laughs) but with audio you've got to suggest there are big green monsters running over the hills without saying so in as many words that's the heart how do you find writing you know, if you're trying to describe what the characters in the audio are seeing without actually having the character say, oh, look over there, something big and frightening is coming towards us. <laughs> oh, why have you got that in your hand? Why are you looking at me in that way? Oh, that, that took me a while. But I remember the big difference for me was I forgot how free you were. Because I'd started out teaching myself to write film yes. scripts and all of this. And yeah, yeah. you're obviously thinking, budget, can't do a night shoot, can't do this, can't do that. Yeah. With TV, Audio. they're always talking about budget. You yeah, can't do that, it's yeah, too expensive. Yeah. You can't set it on a train, we can't afford a train. You can't. Yeah, you know. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and even with the like, extras and supporting artists. about big green monsters running over hills. Yeah. <laughs> when are you going to get the budget for that, Lisa? There it is no do. budget. Yeah. Well, you, we're restricted for cast numbers, aren't we? But yes. even then... You can double with an audio in a way that you can't on Yeah, and TV also we've got such brilliant performers who can do fantastic things with yeah. their voices that, you know, you can get away with. And that's the brilliant thing about the Doctor Who universe is the female characters. Mm. So Big Finish are great at now putting people in directing and producing and writing roles, but the, the stories of the all the actual characters themselves. The actual characters, great characters. Female characters. yeah, yeah. yeah. And the fact that we get to combine them in different ways yes. is just, just incredible. Passion projects, mm. um, ones I've really, really cared about, I think, is the Lady Macbeth one. When you get to put a little of your own passions yeah. into it, yeah. and you kind of go, ooh, I'm selfishly putting my own interest into the story, yes. that's brilliant. Because it is my favourite play. Um, and other than that, I think writing for Jacoby's Master. Mm. To write that evil, and that's why I want to write for Missy as well, because I'd like to get her up as much as possible in terms of the evil state. Yes. Uh, even though they're both so different. But <laughs> they to, are. he just gets darker and darker, and I so love dark. writing like that. The How sort about of you? What are your violence. passion projects? Um, it is writing for the women. I did miss it. I wrote Missy, and I created a female character for that which I'm really really proud of and which Who's I really love the Lumiat oh who is yes a sort of, she's another well yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's an incarnation of Missy that that is good and pure and light and love and joy and sweetness and like sort of Mary Poppins on acid um, it was lovely playing the sort of the same character but of dark side and a light side and how they riffed off each other um and it was me just trying to get another female master yeah, in yeah, there yeah. as well. <laughs> One of the reasons you started writing was surely because you didn't see what was out there for women. There's not, Is that true? There's not in, I mean, I, I wrote, started writing the what I wrote because, yeah, there's not enough female stories told. Yeah. Um, or if they're told, they're told by 
men very often on the TV. Um, yeah. We can tell real female stories because history has erased so many mm. female voices that you and there are loads and loads of brilliant stories. I did another Christopher Eccleston with about uh, the first woman to win the Nobel Peace Prize, who nobody's heard of. Nobody's heard oh, of. Wow. And she worked for Alfred Nobel as his housekeeper, and it was partly her idea. The idea that we, because she was a massive pacifist, and it was her suggestion. She wrote in a letter wow. to him that maybe he should consider setting up a prize for people, and nobody's ever heard of her. It's, so oh, we get goodness. a chance to give voices to voices that have yeah. but we get that chance to go well I'm going to pitch you three things that I've always wanted to do and I'm yeah. probably never going to get the chance and it, amazingly enough the you know our editors are always interested Brilliant. in those yeah oh I'm just looking at the female characters that you've written for and I was a bit jealous of some of yours I am that's what I'm doing I know, I'm going yeah. oh I want that and one also and also I'm looking at yours going up but, but, but I've had that too why isn't she on my yeah. list <laughs> So you've written, oh, Jo Jones. Yes. Well, and that's a You said you've met, you've met her as well. Yeah, I was, um, I gave birth to a double-decker bus <laughs> on Iris Wild Time. Right. I've been in a couple of Iris Wild Times. Amazing. And I was, it was an absolute honour. Um, but that. yeah, specifically <laughs> recently, I've yeah. written for, uh, am I allowed to say third doctor? Yeah. It's well, it's, 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 it's on the piece it's of paper. paper. Asked, I've been asked to ask you about, about yeah. writing for Joe. so. There you go. Um, but that, I mean, she is one of my favourites and I find her voice quite, I don't know, sometimes you just have an affinity with certain voices, don't you, certain yeah. characters, because you maybe mm. think you've fallen slightly in love with them or they're a little bit like you or I, I can just hear her voice. Um, so that, that was a joy. And it was interesting then trying to get the difference between Joe Grant and Joe Jones yeah. and, you know, what that what subtlety might be. Like what, what, what? Um, that she's a bit more independent, a bit more focused okay. in uh, environmental pursuits yeah. and issues and uh, um, perhaps is, is giving, having an adventure is one more, having one more go with the Doctor is kind of... I revisiting like something. I love that. I know, it's nice, isn't it? I'm reading this off a piece of paper, I've got a list of Lizzie's characters. It says Brigadier Bambira. <laughs> um, Angela Bruce is, is up there in my top Same, five. I love Because when I was growing up, like watching her, just, it, she's so good. Again, she can do the funny and, yeah. and you know, and she's got such status she's as well. She's got such gravitas Power. about her, hasn't she? Yeah. yeah. Who do you find the easiest to write? That's an interesting question. Um, I'd say River, because she's, I like her banter, I like her cheekiness. I, I requested her when they, Ooh. yeah, when I yeah. finally got to do the 8th of March, um, finally, mm. that was my first yeah. Doctor Who. So your first Doctor Who was River Song? I request, yeah, Ooh. I requested, and... See, you've got to, you've got to ask for what you and want. And Leela. <laughs> it was double power. Double whammy. Double wow. kick-ass women. And um, those two meetings. Those wow. two meeting, it was just such a thrill because the two of them are so... Because I knew that you, you, you almost expect them to be at each other's throats. Well, yeah. Because they're both quite mercenary and quite physical in the, mm. the way they respond to challenges. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I wanted to write them because this is another thing going back to the whole women writing women. We so often get that jealousy and that, especially with the Doctor's companions, when they meet, there's that antagonism that, well, he loves me more than he loves you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing. yeah, yeah. And I didn't want that. I wanted yeah. to, them to meet and to instantly just blooming get love each other. On. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they became so the, writing female solidarity was was great for for those two. I, I recently uh, wrote for Tegan. Yeah, you know, and then I, I hadn't done that before. I couldn't believe I hadn't done it before. And I'm like, oh God, I better watch them just to remember. And you like two seconds, you're like, got it, <laughs> I've got it. But Rebecca Root, that was a oh, joy no. to to write for her. She was brilliant. Yeah, um, I love that character. I remember coming to Stranded and thinking, I'm never going to be able to absorb all of this in yeah. order to write a script because I didn't know that world. And then you, you realise the relationships between Tanya and Helen and, you know, that yeah. whole... Oh, it was yeah. lovely. OK, um, Rose Tyler. Oh, yeah. Ooh, oh, writing for Rose. I know. I'm basically trying to tick off every 
<laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. All the dogs. All the <laughs> oh, did you ask for her as well? Um, how did that come about? Mm, was it I Dimension can't Cannon? I remember, actually. That was, uh, it was Dimension Cannon, yeah. yeah. Um, that was really good fun. And again, this is what Big Finish do. They take these the companions and give them their own series yeah, so yeah, that yeah, you've yeah. got this brilliant female character who is suddenly leading the box set. Oh, Jenny, another oh. one. I've never heard about Jenny. The, yeah, the doctor's daughter. So she's got his innate quest for sorting out things that have gone wrong in space and time. So she's cl clattering about the universe, but she hasn't got, she's got his drive and his enthusiasm um, and his will to do good and have adventures, but she hasn't got the the focus and the experience and the skills that the doctors acquired over hundreds and thousands of years. So she is like a, a, a sort of Time Lord Labrador <laughs> bounding about <laughs> space and time. I, mean, I spent years trying to teach myself to write because um, I always thought I could, I always did it, but mm. you know, and you kind of suddenly see a script for the first time, you go, oh, that's different. Um, so I got all the screenwriting books I yeah. could. And I, I was fascinated by structure because every so often you get some feedback and you don't know what it means. Yeah. You know, I remember someone saying to me that something had a, a difficult tone or the tone was off. And I'm like, I get that now, right all the time. <laughs> <laughs> now I know what that means. Yeah. And that people can explain it in a better way than that. But at the time I'm thinking, what? And structure as well. Structure took me ages. Structure's I remember handing so things hard. in that didn't have a third yeah. act or didn't have that, you know, the beats that you're meant to have. And what I used to do is I not only, you know, I just used to watch films with a pad and a pen and see if I could work out. Yeah, the, the turning yeah, points in exactly. a story, yeah. Um, and really shred a script, a script apart. And that was, that became almost a, you know, obsessional thing. Um, and then learning, it was actually weirdly enough in a newspaper office, I learned about different writing in different mediums because I, I did it in between jobs as an actor. And I was working on the news desk, then in the arts desk, then the advertorials, and there was a you had to have a different way of writing for each yeah. one, tonally, yeah. but also where you put the salient facts, yeah. you know, and each thing was different. And when I realised that, it was like, wow, you can be, you know, certain voices, you know, getting learning your own voice, you can manipulate that. And don't give up. Don't. Somebody once said, just stay on the bus. Because yeah. the only people who don't get to the end are the people who get off the bus. <laughs> that's, that's true, though. I was unaware of International Women's Day until a few years ago, and I was on I was on a tour, and one of the crew, a theatre crew, gave out these little heart shaped stones to all the women in the oh, cast and crew, and I was like, lovely. What's, "What's this thing?" So International Women's Day, and I had not heard of it, and it was weird because suddenly we had this thing, yeah. and it was like. Ooh, that being in the swaptimist or something. Special. Like special. <laughs> but I was only aware of this group and I thought, oh my God, I'm part of this part yeah, of something. Part of yeah. this thing. And I hadn't seen it in that way before. Do you know what? And I then, hadn't heard of it until yeah. I got asked to do the 8th of March box set for Big Finish for right. International Women's Day. And I went, eh? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's that? And yeah. so that opened my eyes. So it, it's so important. And I think it's really important that big finish do things like this and that everybody should do, have to celebrate to the you know that whole half of yeah what's creating whatever you're in the middle of doing well it sparks solicit. conversation yeah. it's a reason to say well hang on we're celebrating achievements of women but also this still needs looking at and that still needs looking yeah. at and why are we, why you know why are we still holding our keys in our hands when we walk home at night and yep. why are is that a bit dark for this? <laughs> like, no, absolutely not. I just always go back to Margaret Atwood and her handmaid's tale and that yeah. idea that men are afraid that women will laugh at them, women are afraid that men will kill them. And yeah. it just, part of that is at the heart of most of the things that I write because it just, it, it dominates your life as a woman, I yeah. think. It's yeah. always there in the background. It's often on the news and we just, and it's, but it's, and it's, and it's so, such a, a frequent occurrence that there's another news story and another news story and yeah things like international women's day allow you to say well what are uh, we doing can we still, do something yeah 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 sorry that's it's a good turn <laughs> no, it, no it's important because that is part of our experience mm. but 
it, we don't want it to define us. We don't us. want it to define us. <laughs> so we... it's it's difficult then when you look at the stories that are told yes. about women, especially on, on telly, okay, telly and film, and yet again you see another woman going through these horrendous yeah. things and another story that starts off or a series that starts off in a horrendous way and you go, well, yeah, you know, that this is still our experience, but can we can we not... Can we not just by tell that? the stories um, of women as, as victims? Can we tell all the other stories that, yeah, exactly. that are out there? And while still addressing that problem. Yeah. In Which is why life. I think if you're gonna if you're gonna tell that story, we need to see more of it that story told from a female yeah, yeah, point yeah. of view. I still think women are still seen as a as a thing. And they know? think and we are a genre. Women, a, yeah. We, yeah. <laughs> we're a genre. Yeah. And that was something that, that was there for me at universities and was inspired mm. to write my own roles. is because I couldn't find a female protagonist that was just a protagonist, like the everyman, yeah. every woman. She always had to be the, the mother or the girlfriend mm. or the appendage or the, you know, the, she, she was there because of her sexuality or something. Well, the, what that bugs me as well, the amount of female stories <laughs> that are really very specifically written female stories, that are, that are, but they're written by men. Mm. So A, we want more stories that are not just, that are women, char female characters just that are not, to be. that just happen to be. But also, yeah. if you're going to tell a specifically female story, Allow a woman to tell it. It's not, you know. So yeah, well, female writers that came before, are massively inspirational. Mary Shelley, ugh, founder ah, of science fiction. In, in yeah, uh, in, she was. Yeah, she's a big inspiration. That 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 brain to have come up with that story. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and and they're light years ahead of its time. I mean, yeah, and. Uh, and in those circumstances where women had, you know, there was no chance you had to pretend to be a bloke most of the time in order to get a book published. Yeah, <laughs> if yeah, you think yeah. it like the Bronte, I love the Bronte sisters as well. Yeah. Um, love them, love that they did that. They were like, right, we'll just, we'll just change our names. Let's give ourselves sort of gender neutral yeah, names. Yeah, yeah. And uh, lo and behold, oh, yeah, published. look what we did. Yeah. Mm, um, give us half a chance. Yeah. you. Well, it's, it's lovely you mentioned, you know, the historical names. I hadn't really thought down that route. I think, um, that, I mean, obviously I had acting heroines, really. And weirdly enough, the first, when I was a, a kid, the first person I really associated with was Glenda Jackson. <laughs> she played Elizabeth I on She's telly when brilliant. I was growing up. Glenda Jackson, and then I remember, like, I remember seeing her Elizabeth with, you know, that forehead, yeah. and you know, and it was extraordinary. And again, she was playing a really strong protagonist. I saw her do was, King Lear. A few I years saw ago. her King Wasn't Lear. Wasn't she good? Yeah, <gasps> I saw her King Lear. Yeah. And I wet myself with excitement. Yeah. But then after seeing that, to seeing her on um, Morecambe and Wise, yeah, that was massive for me because you could see someone who was terrifying and yet funny. And that's something I wanted to ask you about as well. You know, talking about inspiring women, you are also inspiring to me because you're a contemporary, so at, hurrah yeah. for you. But you, you kind of go down that line a lot of um, comedy and dark. You're very witty, and yet you can tell a dark or dramatic story I find it at the same time. Well, yeah, you say that, but I don't believe that. And I find, I find that's something I really struggle with is trying to not over comedy everything <laughs> i guess coming up myself <laughs> somebody dies and then somebody slips on a banana skin but then that's your voice maybe it is my voice but i railed against it for so long because yeah. i was in i was talking about t notes on tone i get that all the time um right we're struggling with the tone of this because it seems to be very dark but there's a lot of humor in there like mm -hmm. but that's the stuff i like to you to be fair, yeah. your writing is, is well, quite I love, like that I as always well. have, and I get attracted to yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah, me too. But yeah. yeah, I think to manage to do that properly is a skill. Just to tread blend that fine tones line like between, that. I think that's, yeah, and my favourite actors do that as well. My favourite comedians yes. do that. Yes. How do you deal with, or do you see it as something you need to deal with, the loneliness of being a writer? I love it. Yeah. I can't write anywhere with <laughs> other people. I can't understand people who go to coffee shops 
yeah. and write. Like the, with all that, I mean, it's again, it's the focus yeah, and the distraction. Yeah, yeah. The slightest, if there's anybody else in the house, I can't, I can't focus. I mean, I, during lockdown, I was locked down with my parents for a year. And so I had to, had to write right. with yeah. other people. I found it incredibly difficult and that was very hard for my mental health because I've had to write but also but I find it really just <laughs> wow. take a dark yeah. turn. but I really struggle to write if there's anybody else around I need to be alone so isolation is my friend see that's fascinating because so many writers I understand that mm. so many writers talk about isolation being the thing they they find hard because I I was um mentioning lockdown you know you just I was just in my room writing yeah. writing for Big Finish more than I have I've wrote more in one year than I ever have and I um same it taught yeah. me to write because I was just a machine because you you are in your little world but also you're creating worlds inside your head so you know yeah. that you suddenly realize hours have gone by and you were hungry or you you know you'd you'd finish something and you'd realize where you were and you were still in this little room and that's yeah that's extraordinary but no, I do think I'm lucky. Yeah. yeah. It's weird, oh, isn't it? Even though so I'm not a famous lucky. writer. Despite I'm the fact lucky. that I grumble and groan, I walked in here yeah. today going, oh, I'm swamped with the deadlines. <laughs> but how lucky to be swamped Moaning's with the deadlines. Moaning's part of the job. <laughs>